So Apple just had their annual September event, which is probably one of their biggest, most important events of the year because, of course, that is when we get to see the new iPhones when they're announced and then they come out shortly after that. So this year, of course, we have iPhone 16 and 16 Pro. And then Apple also introduced a new Watch Series 10 as well as some new AirPods. So this year was kind of a very minor incremental year, which is, you know, kind of the same thing we're getting every single year now. But uh, this year was kind of interesting with some of the choices that they made. So let's go ahead and just hop into this. So the iPhone 16 starts at $799 and it comes in several different colors here. Um, it seems like Apple has decided to do the more vibrant colors. I think that's probably a play on the Apple intelligence uh, because it has a lot of, you know, more vibrant colors and everything. But here are the new color palettes for iPhone 16. So we got this really cool ultramarine color. We also have a new teal, a pink, and then the typical white and the black. I think this pink iPhone is probably going to sell really, really well, uh, but that's just my opinion. So. Uh, there you go. You also have 16 and 16 plus. And overall, like I said, this has been a very minor update this year. Um, the design itself is essentially the same as iPhone 15 and maybe some of the previous phones. Uh, but the main thing is something that wasn't really expected is there's a new camera control button. So this kind of allows you to kind of tune your camera settings without having to actually touch the screen. So you can zoom in, you can take pictures, you can change the modes. Basically you have all your different camera tools right there in that button. Now this is something that's been around again on Android phones for quite some time. And I don't know if this is necessarily going to be something that is utilized as much. Um, and you can see it's on the right hand side below the power uh, button there. So when you rotate your phone and you're holding it, you can see this other picture, you know, it is going to be a natural feeling to hold, but I just don't know if it's going to be something that is going to work like the action button. You know, the action button was kind of the same way. It was cool when we first had it and then it was kind of over with. But now that action button has also made it to the iPhone 16, so I guess it's no longer a special pro feature uh, like they had it for iPhone 15 Pro. But with every iPhone every year, of course, there's a new chip that's faster than the previous year. There's new cameras, new camera improvements, and things like that. The sensors and the cameras are new, and you do get a uh, much better quality and different look there. They've also kind of stacked them on the back design uh, which I prefer, you know, it's kind of like a throwback to the iPhone uh, 10 days, which is pretty nice. Also, these phones have uh, bigger batteries, which is very promising. Uh, you can see that it says up uh, 27 hours of video playback and 22 hours um, of video playback on the 16 there. So uh, it can also charge faster uh, with MagSafe now. But overall, I mean, it's just, it's essentially the same phone as last year. I mean, if you want the new feature like the camera control then I guess you can upgrade but yeah action button is pretty funny to have that on here since we thought that was a pro feature uh, but I guess not but yeah this phone looks really good I do like the new colors uh, on it but really at the end of the day it's kind of like if you have a 15 or uh, maybe even a couple years for that you probably shouldn't even upgrade uh, to this phone but yeah, the color palette's pretty nice, I guess. Same kind of goes for 16 Pro. So they added one new color, Desert Titanium, although it doesn't really look that much different in pictures than the natural titanium. I don't know, it'll have to be something that we'll see uh, in person. But of course, with the 16 Pro, they added the camera control button, just like they did on the 16. And then they tweaked the processor A18X chip in there and better cameras. These are actually all three new cameras here on the Pro phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, that's really one of the main reasons you buy a Pro phone is for the cameras. Um, you can now do extra slow video, uh, which is pretty cool. You do the 4K 120 frames per second, uh, which is pretty nice that'll be pretty helpful uh, but that's probably gonna be a big file size new 48 megapixel sensors and all that good stuff in the cameras but overall this pro phone is really 
the same as last year's profile. And I mean, again, very minor incremental update here. One of the main things too with the Pro phones this year is a slightly newer display. Um, these phones literally get bigger every single year. It's so crazy. But now uh, the Pro, which I got right here in the middle, has a 6.3 inch screen and then the Pro Max has a 6.9 inch screen, which is just really, really crazy. Another interesting thing about the Pro Max and the Pro this year is now there's essentially no difference between the two phones other than the screen size. Usually over the years, the Pro Max gets like one more new feature compared to the standard Pro, which may or may not make you want to jump up to the Pro Max. It's usually something like a camera or the fact that the battery's bigger, you know, all that kind of stuff. But this year, these two phones are essentially identical. I mean, you see the same processors, exact same camera system on both phones. The only difference, of course, still is that battery because the phone is bigger. So if that extra few hours of battery life is very necessary to you, then that's really one of the main reasons for you to jump to the Pro Max phone. It's also nice to see that uh, prices are still the same this year for these phones. There was a rumor that Pro might get a little more expensive, so that doesn't seem to be the case. But yeah, that's essentially iPhone 16 and 16 Pro and Pro Max uh, camera improvements with the camera control function, bigger screens, um, you know, just the typical uh, Apple stuff that they do every single year. Next thing we'll talk about is Apple Watch. So Apple Watch was kind of, in my personal opinion, a letdown because I was expecting a pretty substantial redesign being the 10th anniversary of Apple Watch. You know, when iPhone 10 came out, that was basically the last time Apple's innovated in a long time where they did a whole new redesign, entire new phone. It was amazing. And I was expecting, you know, maybe Apple would go crazy again for uh, the 10th series watch, but that was certainly not the case. It's extremely, extremely minor update here for series 10 compared to the series nine. Again, a uh, faster processor on the inside. Also, they have made it bigger, which they do every single year. Um, you can now get it in 44 millimeter and 46 millimeter. They claim that they made the bezels thinner, which allows the screen to be stretched a little bit more. It's also a thinner body. I think it's like 10% thinner, 10% bigger screen maybe. But they're saying this is the biggest watch display ever. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, people are comparing it to older watches and things and they're saying the bezels are the same size. I don't know. I personally have a Series 6 watch. so. I'm about 90% sure that I want to go ahead and upgrade because I typically do my Apple Watches about every four years. So I think I'm probably going to go ahead and upgrade to the Series 10. Um, but I'm not sure what screen size I want because right now my um, my watch here, I believe it's, I think it's a 44, 42 millimeter. I, I can't remember uh, what it is, but... I'm kind of looking at getting the smaller one um, at this time. So uh, the screen, like I said, much better um, on this watch. But yeah, that's really, that's, that's all to really talk about is it's thinner and it's, you know, got the slightly better screen. Speaking of other Apple Watches out there, there's Apple Watch Ultra 2. And you can see that literally all it says is that there's a new color. I, I thought that was kind of surprising that it's one of those surprising things that Apple did today. So Apple Watch Ultra 2 is still the exact same watch that we had. It just comes in the new satin black finish, which looks great, but it's kind of surprising that there wasn't anything else new with that. There was also not a new Apple Watch SE. Again, kind of surprising. That's their cheapest offering. Not sure why they didn't do anything. Maybe we'll see that stuff next year. So Series 10 also comes in new colors, all new bands, and also they're replacing the stainless steel with titanium. Kind of typical, we saw that coming. There is a new jet black finish on there, which is kind of a throwback to, you know, iPhone, earlier iPhone days. I will show you guys something kind of funny. Uh, this is my Series 6. If you guys watch the channel, you know that that is what I have. 
So I'm kind of determining right now whether or not it's worth upgrading. I mean, I got my Series 6 in 2020, so it's now going to be about four years old. But when you scroll through here and you actually look, they're really similar, which is just kind of crazy to me, you know, a four-year-old watch. So again, bigger case on the Series 10. I have a 44 millimeter right now, so I'm not sure if I want 46 or maybe go a little smaller for 42. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, they both have always on displays. However, this one now has the wide angle OLED display. It also can get slightly brighter, uh, 2000 nits, but overall not too terribly different, I guess. Both of them have ECG app. The plus though, of course, is the blood oxygen app on the Series 6. Apple got into some patent issues, I think, so they couldn't put this in any future watches. So they both do sleep tracking, but one of the main new things for Series 10 and other watches is the sleep apnea notification. So it'll be able to determine um, basically if you have sleep apnea with the gyroscope. That's pretty cool. Um, they both have Vitals app. They both have cycle tracking. They both have the cycle tracking, except the newer ones have temperature sensing. Both have emergency SOS. Both are water resistant for 50 meters. Another new thing on these new watches is the depth gauge up to six meters and a water temperature sensor. Both have GPS or cellular. Obviously the Series 10 has the better uh, processor in it with double tap and all that good stuff but still you know the series 6 is kind of it's okay you know it's kind of slowing down now but it's still relatively quick um, same battery life 18 hours obviously the series 10 is going to charge faster and have a longer low power mode both come in aluminum i mean everything is relatively similar which almost makes me not want to upgrade but i feel like i need to i'm really kind of torn right now because if I can save money, I think I should. Um, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Should I upgrade from my Series 6 to my Series 10? I, I don't really know. But yeah, that's basically Apple Watch Series 10, Apple Watch Ultra 2. Nothing really uh, substantial there. The last thing that has got me really confused about the event is the AirPod selection. So there is an extremely cool new feature with the new airpods and we'll talk about that um that's on airpods pro we'll talk about that in a second but what apple did is they released a new version of airpods so this is airpods fourth generation they start at 129 however if you want active noise cancellation you can bump that up to 179 despite bumping it up to that i still think that's a great price uh, for these headphones and especially I don't know of many headphones under $200 that have active noise cancellation and Apple does it pretty pretty well um, I had AirPods Pros for a couple years and they were just fantastic basically what Apple has done here is they've redesigned the standard AirPods slightly kind of changed the shape of them just a little bit uh, so they can fit in more people's ears be more comfortable and all that good stuff um, so that's the main thing they're slightly redesigned but what they did from what I can tell is they've added in all of the AirPods Pro features so essentially you're getting AirPods Pro in the AirPods but the best way to look at this is to compare so let's go to compare and we'll compare uh, obviously this is AirPods the standard one and all that but airpods 4 active noise cancellation so the only thing you don't get of course is active noise cancellation and conversation awareness you don't get that on the standard ones makes sense right but everything else is basically uh, the same except for the charging case but let's compare but instead of airpods 4 uh, we're going to just put in airpods max I feel like most people that opt for AirPods are going to get the ones with the active noise cancellation because why not? It's just a little bit more money and that's a pretty cool handy feature. So I think people will go for that. So all new AirPods 4, different design, all the pro features bundled up into the cheapest AirPods. Pretty cool. AirPods 2 remains unchanged. Again, 
no update to AirPods Pro. However, the one thing they are going to update, which is going to be VI software update whenever it gets FDA approval, is Apple has essentially turned AirPods Pro into a hearing aid device, which I think is pretty... This is probably one of the most important features, I think, that was announced, uh, because this is really going to be an industry disruptor if it works, and I'm sure it will work. And, you know, hearing aids, at least here in America, I don't know about the rest of the world, our healthcare is kind of weird. You know, everything costs an absolute fortune. Hearing aids are not cheap. I mean, they're several thousands of dollars, even with insurance, probably. So, yeah. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty cool stuff. But let's just take a look at the comparison. This is what gets me. AirPods 4 and AirPods Pro 2. AirPods Pro 2 is unchanged, basically, except for the software update that's coming. So they both have the H2 chip. They both have noise cancellation, conversation awareness, spatialized audio with head tracking. The difference on the noise cancellation, AirPods Pro 2, it says it has up to two times more active noise cancellation. Probably the reason for that is that the fact that the AirPods Pro go into your ears, right? I, I mean, that's probably the only reason why it says that. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, we keep scrolling, though. You can see there's that new hearing test right there. Hearing test, hearing aid, and protection features uh, coming for software update. The other difference with these, of course, AirPods Pro have touch controls, and then you have the 4 sensor. You actually have to squeeze you know, the stem or whatever on the AirPods 4. Slightly better listening time one hour extra on AirPods Pro. For most people, I'm not sure that's going to make a difference, but it might. And then you have 30 hours listening time with the charging case, which is the same. And then the charging case is slightly different. AirPods Pro uses MagSafe, and then AirPods 4 can do wireless charging. They're both dust, sweat, and water resistant. Both have the, hey, you know who, automatic switching, all that stuff, right? So essentially, you don't need the hearing features, why would you buy AirPods Pro 2? Only if you want them to go in your ears? I mean, that's just really confusing to me. And then last but not least, the final confusing thing for me is these guys over here, AirPods Max. <laughs> AirPods Max, I was so surprised by this. They got literally nothing. They, they got one new thing Apple has finally added the USB-C port and removed the lightning port. And there's new colors. That's literally it. These headphones have been out now for, I guess they've been 2020 as well. So they've been out for four years. No design changes. Um, no power button on them, which is really annoying. Just all this stuff has been the same for four years. And they're Good quality, good sounding headphones. I don't own any. I've never listened to them though. But all the reviews that I've seen, they're pretty good headphones. They're still the same price, $550. But yeah, new colors, USB-C port. It still has the H1 chip. I mean, that's that's just crazy. Uh, it only it doesn't even have conversation awareness. I mean, it's just it's really weird. It still has that terrible case that nobody likes. So, yeah, AirPods Max, I don't know what Apple was doing with those. Anyways, that's basically everything that was new here. Um, I believe iOS 16 and others come out early next week, and you can pre-order this stuff, I think, maybe early next week. I don't know, but let me know what you guys think about this and whether or not you're going to upgrade to any of these new products. I am still trying to debate whether or not I want to get the Series 10 watch. I am going to get AirPods Pro 4 with active noise cancellation. I gave my other AirPods away and ever since I did that I regret it. So I am going to get the new AirPods. I think they'll definitely be worth the price. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel on that. Again, still trying to decide if the new Apple Watch is worth it or I should just keep rocking with the Series 10 for the time being. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching the channel as always, and I'll catch you all in the next video.